All right, so one way to measure the height of the tree or to approximate the height of a tree is to pretend that you've chopped it down because if that tree is laying on the ground, the distance across the ground, across here, will be the same as the distance from the bottom of the tree to the top of the tree, right? If you cut it down, it's the same tree, it's just laying on the ground now. So measuring it on the ground is a lot easier than measuring it from the top of the tree. We'd have to climb the tree and drop a tape measure down from there, and that would be, well, hard and complicated, especially if we had to do lots and lots of trees. We're only doing one tree, yeah, it might be kind of fun to climb it, but yeah, let's not do that today, huh? So we're gonna pretend like we've dropped this tree, and there are two quick ways to do that. A really fast and easy method is called the rule of thumb, and that's saying, it's used often if, for example, you want to know if this really tall tree next to your house, if it were to get blown over by the wind or struck by lightning, would it actually hit the house? So the way you would do it is you just stick out your thumb and you can put your thumb right there in front of the tree and you would move to the distance where your thumb or the bottom of your hand is the bottom of the tree and your thumb is at the top of the tree and then you would just go timber, poof keeping the bottom of your hand there at the bottom of the tree and see where the tip of your thumb is. And you can see the tip of your thumb is going to land all the way over there. If it was over here, here it would hit your house. If it were your house were over there, it would miss your house. So that's a fast, easy way to do it. A more accurate way requires use of a friend and you can do it more easily because you can adjust the length of the stick. So what I want to do is I want to hold up my stick so that my stick is the length of this tree. So I'm just going to move my hand. So I'll put the, the top of the stick up there at the top of the tree and I move my fingers until they're at the bottom. So now there you go. That's the height of the tree. The entire stick from where my fingers are down here to the top of the stick is equivalent to the height of the tree from my point of view right now or from the point of view of the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend to cut this tree down. I'm going to go timber, boof. And I'm going to lay the tree all the way over there. And with the tree all the way over there, it's laying on the ground now, I'm pretending, right? I need to, what I need to do is ask a friend to walk from the base of that tree to the tip of this stick, from my point of view. And while they're walking there, they're not going to be getting closer to me and they're not going to be getting further away from me. They're just going to walk in a straight line, kind of parallel with the way I'm holding the stick, right? Parallel means not getting closer, not getting further away. And when from my point of view, they're standing at the tip of that stick, I tell them to stop. It's kind of like right where that white sign is right there, or that white post. I am simply going to ask them to measure their distance from the tree. And their distance from the tree will be the same as the height of the tree. It's the same principle as the thumb principle, right? We had our thumb up here and we went, boof, and we knocked the tree down. And when the tree came down, that was the height of the tree. It's kind of similar, you can tell, right? Slightly different, but very close. That's one fast, easy way to measure the height of the tree. So of all the ways to measure the height of a tree, this is certainly the most ridiculous looking way to do it. It's kind of like this. Basically, you're just looking underneath your legs. You're walking really weird, and what you're doing is bending over, putting your hands on your ankles and put your hands on the ground. Look between your legs, and what you want is the top of the tree to be right in the center of your legs. Look at that, further still. Kind of goofy looking, right? Yeah. It's also the least accurate way to determine how tall a tree is. But hey, it's kind of fun, nothing else. Okay, the next way that we are gonna look at the height of a tree it's a little bit more complicated in concept. In practice, it's still really simple. It's not very hard to do. But kind of understanding why it works is a bit trickier. So I want to go through why it works. And this involves geometry. And really what it involves is the magic of a 45-degree triangle. I'll show you what that is now. A 45-degree triangle is basically half of a square. This ruler now, you can see on the screen here, 
is pointing at a 45 degree angle. And then over here we have a square. What do we know about squares? We know that every side of this square is the same length, right? If they were different lengths, we'd have a different shape. But a square has equal length sides, and we also know that each corner in that square is a 90 degree angle. These are right angles, right? So we have four right angles and four sides that are of equal length. That is the definition of a square. But really, all a square is, is two triangles stuck together. Show you that real quick. So if we, if we take our, our ruler, we put it over here, split our square in half. What do we have? Two triangles. We got a triangle up here. We got a triangle down there. Yep. So those are two 45 degree triangles. And what's important about this is we have one of the corners of our triangle, like this corner here, for example, that's a 90 degree angle. This angle here, that angle, and the other one on the other side, these, this angle, these two are both 45. So that's a 45 degree angle. And this one here we know is a 90 degree angle, right? If we have a triangle like that, then we know that each side, this side here of this triangle is identical in length to the side of, the, of this other side of the triangle. Not the long side across the middle, but the two on the sides. These two sides here are, have to be the same length because this is really basically just half of a square, right? Keeping that in mind then, how are we going to use that to measure the height of a tree? Well, here's the cool part. Let's draw a tree. So we got a tree over here, right? Boom, this is our tree. I'm horribly lousy at drawing trees, but we'll say this is a ugh, horrible tree. This is our tree, right? If you can imagine that this right here is a 45 degree triangle from the top of the tree to the ground, and then this, of course, let's make this 90 up here real quick. This is, of course, the height of the tree, yes? So that's the height of the tree. Basically what we have here, can you see how this is working out? We have a big 45 degree triangle. But the trick is, or the key is, or the only thing that we really have to worry about now that we have our 45 degree triangle is that we need to be standing as a little human being right here. Our eyeball needs to be right there standing on the ground and looking up at that tree at a 45 degree angle. If we're looking at the top of that tree at a 45 degree angle from where we're standing, then we know that the distance from where we're standing to the bottom of the tree is going to be of equal length, and this is the key of equal length, to the distance from the bottom of the tree to the top of the tree. So now then, all we need to do is measure the distance on the ground from where we're standing to the bottom of the tree. It's a whole lot easier than climbing the tree and dropping a tape measure from the top of the tree to the ground. We just measure the distance along the ground because we got us a 45 degree angle. However, to do this, we're gonna need a tool and some kind of a reference, something that makes it easy for us to be certain that we are in fact looking at the top of that tree from a 45 degree angle. And that tool is dead simple. All it is is a triangle. It kind of looks like this. It's just a piece of paper, made out of, it's a 45 degree triangle made out of a piece of paper. And the way I usually do it is I'll hold it and I'll put it up to my nose in the center of my nose and I will line up the bottom of the tree with the bottom of my triangle. Now the tree is probably a whole lot taller than, my, than the top of my triangle is. So I need to walk backwards or forwards depending on what I need to do. I need to go further and further away until the entire tree fits along this side of the triangle. So the top of the tree would be up here at the top of the triangle. And then the bottom of the tree would be down here at the bottom of the triangle. And when that's the case, all I have to do then is measure my distance from the tree, and that will be equal to the height of the tree. Piece of cake. I'll show you how to make one of these. All right, so to make the tool that we need to determine the height of our tree, which is nothing but a 45 degree triangle, all we need is a piece of paper. So I'll show you what that looks like real quick. So you have a piece of paper, it's a rectangle, it's not a square, right? Because this side and this side are longer than this side and that side. So all you need to do 
is take a corner, any corner you want, and fold it over to the other side. It'll look like that. Fold it down. Now if you want, all you have to do is get out a pair of scissors and you can cut along that line you just folded and this piece here will be your 45 degree triangle. Or if you don't even want to bother cutting it, all you need to do is fold it over one more time so it kind of looks like that. And then once more like this, along that edge. And now you have a 45 degree triangle. This is a 90 degree. This is half of a 90 degree. The cool thing about this, if you have two pieces of paper, get another piece. We'll do exactly the same thing. We have two pieces of paper just to point this out. We do exactly the same thing again. Zoop. Two 45 degree triangles, put them together, you have a square. Because this is a 90 degree angle down here at the bottom. That's a 90 degree angle, and that's a 90 degree angle, and we split it in half, which gives us a 45 degree angle. Okay, so let's grab our tool, head outside, and see how this works. All right, another way to determine how tall the tree is, which is what we just discussed, is using a 45 degree triangle. So remember, we made inside a piece of paper that was a 45 degree triangle. Looks like this, right? So to use this tool, what we need to do hold our triangle like this so that the top of the triangle is at the top of the tree and the bottom of the triangle is at the bottom of the tree. So clearly we need to be further away from our tree than we are right now. I mentioned that I put it on my nose and I'm going to spin around and I'm going to put the bottom Oh, I can actually get closer to the tree, so I'm going to move closer to the tree. Alright, the bottom is still on the bottom. Top is getting closer to the top. There it is. Looks like that. So now, the height of the tree will be equal to my distance from the tree. This feels a lot more accurate than the, the goofy way we just did it before. So just using a 45 degree triangle as a reference will allow us to stand as far away from the tree as the tree is tall. All right, so clearly there are a number of different ways now that you can use to measure the height of a tree. You could use a rule of thumb, you could use a stick, you could bend over between your legs and look between your legs and walk away. You could use the 45 degree triangle that we made out of paper or cardboard or plastic, whatever you want to make it out of. It's just half a square, so it's fairly easy to make. Any one of those techniques will do the job. Also in the PDF file that's, associated, that's attached to this video, there are a couple of other techniques that use another mathematical idea called ratios, and these are an even more accurate way to do it. And that's basically a way of measuring, say, the height of a friend relative to the height of the tree and then figuring out how many friends it takes to fill the whole tree. And then if you know how tall your friend is, it's pretty easy to calculate or figure out how tall the tree is. That's another really cool technique, but it requires slightly more complicated math, which we won't get into. But if you want to check it out, check out the PDF. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact us. Until next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.